Hello everyone, this is Alvaro Cortez Jr. aka Lance Danger welcoming you back to the Serene Chaos Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Serene Chaos Podcast, Season 2, Part 2. As I mentioned early on in the earlier episodes, I always intended to take a mid-season break after Episode 6. And it actually happened to coincide with two big losses to the Puerto Rican comic book community and on a personal level as well. Uh, respected creators Jose M. Reyes of Zaramis fame and Miguel Angel Gelo Sanjuljo uh, of Hi, uh, Hibaro Samurai fame sadly passed away earlier this year and it wasn't even two weeks apart that they passed away and it has left a big void in the indie scene in Puerto Rico. Uh, Jose M. Reyes and his comic Zaramez, which was way ahead of its time, and his editorials on comic books were fascinating to read. And Gelo, as we affectionately used to call Miguel Angel Sanjuljo, uh, what can be said of him that hasn't been said already? Uh, he was a pillar in the comic book community. He created the iconic Puerto Rican character Hibaro Samurai and he had a wealth of experience creating indie comics, anthologies of the like, and zines, and was always just a blast to be around. Uh, to both of them, wherever you are, the best way to honor your memories is to keep creating and opening doors for future creators. I hope that you both are resting in peace and hopefully I'll see you all at the turn of the page. Well, today I want to talk about the first characters I actually created. And no, I'm not talking about Warlord or any of the characters within that universe. And certainly not never mind my autobiographical webcomic because you know obviously I didn't create myself or my family and friends that appear in the webcomic. Uh, today I will talk about my social commentary satire comedy webcomic that's in Spanish, Wepaman y Wepito, and my kind of creative process behind this. But before that, visit www truthfulcomics.com and there you are going to find all of my web comics including Wepamani Wepito, the original seasons 1 and 2, as well as a lovely little shop tab where you can buy not only my own comics like Warlord, Nevermind, Truthful Comics Edition, the original 12 strips, and also Stupid the Cat, but you can buy issues 1 and 2 of Manuel Carmona's project new wave and stay tuned to the website because soon issue 3 will be available on indie planet as well as season 1 of the canon girl truthful comics edition you can also find most of these comics on the comic house app comic house is the netflix of comic book streaming and it's an indie alternative to comicsology so for about four dollars thirty cents a month uh that would be three pounds a month uh you can definitely be checking not just that but thousands of other indie creators that have uploaded their comics there to stream as well and now that the shilling is over back to Wepamani Wepito this strip was actually born in seventh grade I had just started middle school in a new school, and we had a class that involved doing art, but 
and not art like doing illustrations or paintings we would actually do like art crafts and that would involve doing stuff with wood and sometimes it would involve like pretty heavy machinery i guess for at the time at our age um that would like drill and suck big chunks of wood to give it form and shape and i was all for it and for one of our projects we had to make a wooden racing car that would be propelled by like a small kind of rocket inserted into the back of it and man i was so pumped for that even though i was never really like a kid that was into cars or grew up being a car guy or anything of the sort but the prospect of creating a small rocket propelled car was something that was really up my alley as a kid so i started to kind of take a liking to drawing sports cars and motorcycles i even started building model kits of cars and one car in particular that i sketched I just kind of named it off the top of my head Wepa Mobile. And for those that don't know the Boricua lingo, <laughs> Wepa is a phrase that's usually shouted out. And it doesn't even really have like a big context to it. It's used for many things like saying hello. Uh, sometimes we say Wepa instead of saying hello. If somebody called my name, well, sometimes I'll just to acknowledge that I heard that I was called, I go WEPA. A sports team wins a big game, we shout WEPA. <laughs> it's mostly a positive, uh, this phrase is what I'm trying to say. So, after I named the car the WEPA Mobile, I named the driver WEPA Man. And my friends had a blast with it when I showed it to them. And when there was a class project to do a fake school newspaper, I of course was assigned with making the comic book section. And so was born Wepamani Wepito. And they weren't brothers like in the current web strip uh, of theirs. Like, no, they were actually superheroes. Uh, the concept and my reasoning behind it was what if I did my own version of Batman 1966 but I make the heroes super dumb and as dumb as possible that was pretty much it and the strip along with another creation that stuck with me since then Stupid the Cat actually was very well loved by not only the students but the teachers as well which thinking back now I guess also encouraged me to keep creating more original comics and characters and kind of delve more into like the creative aspects of comics. Now flash forward to high school I was already dabbling with Warlord and his universe but kind of to decompress I started doing Wepamani Webito strips as well on one of my notebooks that I used just for doodling and sketching, maybe do a little costume and character design and what have you. And some friends actually kind of caught a glimpse of it and they started reading it and they loved it. So I actually made a series of strips of them that eventually was the series I made in around 2007. Now, flashing forward to 2007, I was already knees deep in doing uh, Fred Peterson, The Mighty Warlord, and Nevermind. And on the side, I was also doing a blog dedicated to my video game wrestling league, the VHWA, or Video Hardcore Wrestling Association. <laughs> yeah, more on that some other time. <laughs> so... I was flipping through some old notebooks and I actually found Wepamani Wepito. And since it was something that was so different 
from what I was doing at the time, I just kind of sat there and thought to myself a little bit. And then I just decided to do an updated version of those strips I did in high school. And it turned out to be one of the most fun, but divisive and controversial strips I did back then. I'm not even lying. I, I mean, if you're wondering how that was controversial, I'm still wondering it myself, to be honest. Because the people that liked it, really liked it. And the few people that hated it, really hated it. And I was actually fine with it. Especially since I found it great that it evoked so many different emotions on so many different levels. And it went as far as one artist actually approaching me and telling me that my career was going to go nowhere because of Web Amani Webito. And that that strip was actually a step back from what I was doing at the time and that I should rethink about my art and my future. Yeah, for some reason, some people took it that seriously for some reason. Oh, but I was unfazed by it because at the end of the day, I was just honestly expressing myself with my art and no one was being harmed by the strips that I was doing. Uh, it wasn't even like overtly political or overly mean or mean-spirited. So I just kept going until I made a season two of the comic that, again, it was overall well-received season two. But that same artist, for some random reason, the one that criticized me, actually recruited other, um, recruited other artist friends of his to, well... A bully would be too strong of a word, I guess, but I guess that group kind of like tried to convince me, kind of like an intervention for me to stop doing these strips or to, and to even stop doing art altogether. But I kept pushing forward despite it all. I really didn't pay that much attention to it. And I finished the second season and after I finished it, I reached to a point where I was doing so many other web comics and web strips at the time and I had also started doing some freelance writing that I decided to give Web Amani Webito a small rest uh, because it was a little too much, uh, a, too big of a bite to chew. And I guess in part of it also it stopped being fun in a way because I was growing a little bit weary from the random drama that it was causing, which again was not a big deal. It was just a small, small but vocal minority that was stirring up all the drama. But again, I do these things for fun and I was still relatively new to self-publishing and I just decided to give Wepamani Wepito a small breather because if it stops being fun to an extent for me, then it's going to hurt the product in the end as well. And I respect my creations enough to not push them forward when I'm not going to be wholeheartedly into it. Now, flash forward again to 2020, and I happen to run into the online files of Web Amani Web Ito. And I started reading them again and I felt nostalgic. I kind of felt these characters talk to me in the same manner that they spoke to me in high school when I found them in the notebooks. And then later on in 2007, when I found the strips I did in high school. And I knew it was time to bring them back. So I also decided to do the Truthful Comics edition of season one of Weppaman y Weppito. And it was a blast to do these characters again. And it was actually even better received now than it was back then, which really blows my mind. As you're listening to this, I'm actually preparing the files to have the Truthful Comics Edition up for print as well and have it available as a physical and digital comic book. 
and I'm also laying out the plans for the season two Truthful Comics edition as well. And not only that, after I finish season two of the Truthful Comics edition of Wepa Mani Wepito, I will also produce the unreleased season three of Wepa Mani Wepito which has had a script already written since almost maybe 10 years ago. All I need is a bit of tweaking to modernize the script and it's good to go. Which kind of brings me now into the segue of kind of my process of what by Mani Webito, um, my creative process. And I hope it doesn't disappoint too many people listening to this. Uh, season 3 will actually be the first time I ever even scripted Wepa Mani Wepito or done any sort of planning at all. At its very core, their strips was always almost like a troll, trolling Puerto Rico and its culture and I trolled it only because I love the culture so much because it is part of my culture and it's ingrained in me. And just because you love that culture doesn't mean that you can't point out some of its flaws uh, in a funny or satirical manner. So contrary to even Nevermind, which has at least some semblance of form, even if it was like bullet points that I wrote down of what I wanted to happen in each strip, seasons one and two of Wepamani Wepito was actually pure improv. What you saw was literally what you got. I would think of a slice of life moment and then I'd wonder, okay, now, how can I make this the most ridiculous as possible? And that was it pretty much. And then the next strip, I would just kind of bounce off of the previous strip and improv the following strip. So all 12 strips from season one and season two were all literally done on the spot the same day I uploaded them. (laughs) And that's the big secret, I guess, of Wepa Mani Wepito. It was basically almost an exercise in writing improv and almost like stand-up comedy. So... I could just de-stress from doing the heavier, darker stuff that I would do in something like Warlord and Nevermind. And especially with season two of Wepa Mani Wepito, I had already started Clown Rogue Assassin and Delta Task Force 6, which was even a little bit darker. So I didn't even write anything down. I would just think of the situation. I drew it out and I made up the dialogue as I was illustrating it. Now, of course, with the Truthful Comics edition, I had essentially the template of what to do, so I just modernized some of the language and situations. But it's still the same at its core. And the script that I wrote for season three was essentially kind of sort of the Marvel method where I outlined the plot, but I also added bits and pieces of dialogue here and there as well. So it's not really a full script, but it's not like just the outline or bullet points. So there is some form to it, but there is still a looseness to it that allows me to improv some situations as well and be more improvisation. So... In a nutshell, that's the story of Wepamani Wepito. I almost feel like this whole episode itself was a troll. You know, it's very fitting for Wepamani Wepito. And of course, this was my creative process behind it. As I said before, I apologize if it's kind of disappointing that that's the way that I do this particular strip. And this was probably the my most bizarre podcast episode (sighs) but in a way i guess it is fitting that it would be the most bizarre episode because i am talking about one of the most bizarre strips that i've ever done with these two crazy brothers and their universe anyway 
Thank you all so much for listening as always. I hope that you got something of value out of this episode. And as always, stay creative, my friends.